Hello there, this is Gordon Goodwin. Hello, Downingtown High School East. Thank you for playing my chart. My man, Sam. I enjoyed it very much. Hope you did too. Freaks me out to think that I was about your age or maybe a little younger when I first heard of the music of Sammy Nestico, and, uh, which changed my life. And now here we are many years later and I wrote a chart and you played it. So uh, thank you again for your performance. Here's a, a few comments about what I, what I observed. And um, there's one overall comment, especially about the um, horn section, but it also kind of applies to the rhythm section in a different way. Um, and it's a comment about breath support and airflow. And I think that a lot of the issues that I heard in terms of intonation, in terms of kind of rhythmic togetherness, in terms of dynamics, uh, almost everything can be traced to air. And I think that you need to get in the habit of really tanking up and supporting your sound with a strong airflow right from your diaphragm so that you um, sustain that air. Like in a phrase like, uh, what bar is it? It's uh, 13, 12, like bar nine. Do da 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 did you hear I sustained my air all the way through? I didn't go do da 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 If you've got a strong uh, commitment to airflow, the notes are gonna pop out of the horn, right? And you're also gonna get a larger dynamic range. And that was one thing that I noticed about your performance on the chart. It seemed to be at one level, more or less. It kind of went a little bit up, from mezzo forte and a little bit down. Uh, but there are a lot of moments in this chart um, where I did write some dynamic contrast, especially after the solo section. Give me a minute to find it here. Yeah, so here it is um, at bar 104, all right? And so it's kind of a unison line uh, with the trumpets and saxophones. Da 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 mezzo forte, right? Uh, mezzo piano. Da 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 So crescendo into that last part, right? I didn't hear as much as that was as I would like. Ba do ba di da 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 Brass hit's got a sports sondo on it. It needs to jump out at you, right? Da 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 da. So when it says mezzo forte, d dynamics are um, subjective, okay? So, like, if I'm saying something to, to you as I'm speaking, and let's say that I want to convey anger, right? So maybe you you would characterize anger as forte, really loud. So if I'm saying, I never want you to do that again. So that's pretty loud, right? However, I can also get my point across by saying the same thing very softly, but with intensity. I, I never want you to do that again, right? You still get the same um, emotion out of it, right? But you've colored it differently. And I'd like to have you guys start thinking about that when it applies to your music. Part of that is also commitment. And that's where the rhythm section comes in because the rhythm section obviously is not using air to produce their tone. But there's still a commitment that has to be made. And in this case, on a song like this, on a tempo like this, um, it's one of uh, committing to time. And it's a harder thing to do than if it was faster or if it was more contemporary or funky or Latin. It's a little easier to get to, to have the energy go th travel through the bar as a rhythm section, travel through the measure, I mean. When you're playing that kind of style, something like this, where you're going, do, 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 do. So the bass player, do, 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 do. To hear how I'm kind of uh, accenting the notes a little bit and I'm connecting them, so it's not do, 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 do. It's do, 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 do. It's a flow. It's like, 
but the horn player does sustain the air, but you have to do it with your fingers. Same thing with the drummer on the ride cymbal. The two of you, the drummer's right hand with that ride cymbal, and the bass player's quarter notes have to be locked. You have to really listen to one another. Um, a piano player did a nice job of playing the written fills. Um, pretty, pretty authentic swing feel. Thank you for that. Um, but I think the key, as I, uh, as I often say to young bands, is you got to listen to this stuff. You got to listen to this kind of music and, and get it in your bones, get it in your body. No other way. No other way to forget about me telling you how to swing. You just listen to it, you absorb it, and you do it. That's how it works. That means you got to listen to Count Basie. you got to listen maybe to, I don't know, the Big Fat Band. That's my band, you know? Listen to us play stuff like this. It maybe it might be a little more relatable, a little more contemporary approach to this, but it is a commitment. And I think you're going to find that on the bandstand or off the bandstand, if you're going to do something, let's do it. Let's commit to it. And that means you're all in. When you're playing this chart or any chart or anything in, in, the, in the band, you're not thinking about anything else. You're not thinking about your mom or your dad or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your math test or whatever else might be on your plate. Not them. You're thinking just about music. Then you leave the bedroom, go take the math test, and now you think about nothing but the math test. It's a kind of a compartmentalization that's really important to make sure you can do your absolute best focused job on whatever chart you're playing. Um, thanks for shooting the video. That's a whole other component to what we have to do when we're doing performances in this way. Um, I think we'll be glad that you have it in future years. You've got a video document of who you were at this age. I want to say a few things about that real quick. Um, when you shoot your video, and some of you, some of you did this, shoot for a well-lit um, environment. I got this ring light. See how well lit up I am? This little ring light that goes around my phone. They're not that expensive. They might be 50 bucks or even less. Makes all the difference. So we can see you. We got to see you. A lot of you guys were in the complete dark. All right? Some of you weren't really framed very well. Some of you were kind of like this, you know, or too far back, right? I want you in the center of your video. Um, landscape is best, not portrait. And also, now I've got a pretty um, complicated background. You got the lights and the big fat band sign, you know. Um, that stuff can be distracting, for a video, not always, but sometimes. I When I'm shooting video, if I'm like right here, I got a keyboard right here, you can't see. But if I'm shooting a video here, I usually clean this up, you know, and make it a little bit less uh, cluttered because they want the audience to focus on you, especially since you have a video. There you guys are on the screen back there, right? You got a video of like 18 people. So it's a lot of information already. So in front of a, uh, a blank wall is best not in front of a window, not in front of a computer screen where there's a light source. So look look at the light source on my uh, TV monitor back there. See, that's this ring light right here shining on that. So I would have to make sure that the TV's angled so it doesn't show that. That is a distraction. You've got to pay attention to that kind of stuff. Um, I think it was the bass player. I saw your head, and you were kind of down like this the whole time. I didn't see your face. I didn't see your instrument. I want to see it. The piano player, it's a harder thing to get an angle. Your angle is pretty good. I could see your hands. I could see the keys. I didn't see your face that much. Think about this stuff, you guys. Um, it may seem like it has nothing to do with music, but it kind of does. It fits in with your commitment to the performance. So thanks again for participating in the National Jazz Festival. And I hope you uh, continue uh, your work and your careers in music. And it brings richness to your life. It definitely did to mine. This is Gordon. Thank you.